What is up, MMA fans? This is Tudo Leonte for Shirtdot.com. And today I have the pleasure to talk with former Bellator MMA lightweight champion, Mr. Brent Primus. Hello, Brent. How are you today? Good, man. Thanks for having me on. Just got done practice like five minutes ago and showered real fast. And uh, yeah, so I, I made it. <laughs> <laughs> How was your morning session? Good. I've already had two training sessions in the day and uh, got one more in this evening. Got one more to do. But uh, yeah, man, they, they feel great. I, I feel great. I feel fast, strong. Uh, my, my weight is good. And um, yeah, I feel great, man. I feel ready. Before we start talking about anything, anything else, we are recording this interview on Memorial Day. Would you like to share a message? Yeah, I mean, thank you to all the military and vets that sacrificed their lives to, you know, make this country as great as it is and, and to give us freedom. And, you know, my brother served in the Marines and he was in there when, you know, right after 9-11 and, and he was in there in the crazy time. And I prayed about him every single day and prayed about him every day and um, yeah, so, you know, thank you to all the vets that sacrificed their lives and uh, you guys are the real heroes for sure. Thank you for sharing that with uh, us today. Um, you are now scheduled to face Alexander Shalbli on June the 24th. Uh, wh where are you preparing for this fight? Man, I'm preparing for war, man. Uh, I'm ready for anything. I know Shalbli's a tough guy. He's got good stand-up, good knees, elbows. Uh, um, He's a tough dude, man. I, I really feel like he's one of the top guys in our division. And, and um, man, I'm, I'm not taking him lightly. That's for damn sure. And, and, and I'm ready for anything. I'm ready for stand-up, ground, wrestling, and I'm prepared for sure. Um, where are you spending your training camp? A lot of American top team in Portland. Uh, I train here four or five times a day, and I drive back. I drive here two hours a day. Uh, uh, American top team and I drive tours back to Eugene and train uh, at performance martial arts there and I usually get time to go to uh, Timo Yama in California and train with, th with them but man gas prices and everything's been such a pain in the butt and <laughs> I'm hoping I'll get at least one week there you know soon but uh, yeah man a lot of a lot of time American top team with all the guys here you you have a point about gas prices um uh, uh, may I ask still may I ask a few of the names you have been sparring with in preparation for this fight yeah man I mean training with uh I know he's like a lot smaller than me but Ricky Simone he's like I've been working with his speed and his wrestling a lot and John Simone his cousin who just came off of a nice uh KO last yesterday and and uh with uh working with my wrestling with Mike Pierce and, and all my dirty boxing and clinch with Ed Herman and uh, yeah, man, that's, it's been, uh, I'm working with a lot of really young and upcoming wrestlers and, and guys that are going to be, a lot of people are going to know these guys' names in the next year or two. And, and uh, but yeah, man, just training uh, with a lot of top guys in shark tanks and, and yeah, man, uh, it's, it's good. I, I'm, I'm definitely feel really prepared and, and ready for anything for sure. You mentioned uh, wrestlers and wrestling uh, a few times. Do you expect that your upcoming fight will go down to, to wrestling ultimately, you know, between you and Shabli? Yeah, I think that, uh, I mean, I, I know a lot of his, his wins in fights are from stand-up. He knocks people out. He, he drops people and finishes them on the ground. And um, he, I think he only has a few um, submissions or something like that, probably three out of his 21 fights or whatever. So I, I know he likes to stand up, but I know his last fight in Bellator against like Bobby King, he took him down every single round and, and everything. So I'm preparing for everything, but I really don't think he's going to want to play in the ground with me too much. I don't think he's going to, but if he does, you know, uh, bring it, you know, my jiu-jitsu feels good off my back and on, on top, but uh, I think he's going to want to keep it standing more than anything. I, I feel. Your latest MMA fight. So you taking on uh... Benson Henderson, you won that fight via unanimous decision. Was that the fight you were expecting from yourself on that occasion? Yeah, you know, after the fight, I was definitely disappointed in myself because there was two times when I I messed up big time in my head, and I knew I messed up. And when I when I should have submitted Benson Henderson, I should have. And uh, for like two or three days, I was kicking myself in the butt because I. I made a mistake that I usually don't do. And it's just like, I knew it right when I did it, 
in, in the cage that I was like, dang it, man, they're, they're, that just cost you that submission. But uh, I felt good fighting Vincent. I, I, I felt like I won every single round. I was thinking I, 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 my gas tank felt good, um, especially going against a vet like him. But um, again, you know, I was disappointed in myself because I really feel like I, I made a couple of errors that should have cost, should have finished the fight for sure. And did that, you know, impacted your training schedule? Did you make any adjustments following that fight? I mean, not really. You know, I felt good that whole training camp. I felt good in the fight. So I kept things pretty much the same besides obviously I, I I'm have a little bit different game plan fighting Shobley than I am Henderson. So I'm definitely mixing yeah. things up a little bit differently and, and, and everything, but, um, kind of keeping things the same and I felt really good and uh you don't want to change anything if it's working um after you defeated Henderson in the post-fight interview you campaigned for a title shot but it hasn't come yet uh, do you expect to get one in case of victory on uh, June the 24th oh yeah for sure I don't think that there's anybody in front of me that you know should be fighting it before I am I uh After that Benson Henderson fight, you know, I, I heard Scott Coker do an interview saying that, yeah, Brent Primus is next in line. He's going to fight for that title. Right after that fight in Arizona with Benson Henderson, I went back and me and my coaches were training for a title fight. We were doing five rounds. Uh, we were training for a title fight. That's what we thought was going to happen. And then we got the call saying, no, I actually found out that he's fighting Sydney Outlaw and like MMA Junkie or something like that. And, I, you know, definitely wasn't cool, but um, it is what it is, man. And, and, uh, I just got to keep my head on my shoulders and keep grinding and, and I'll get that title shot. And I really think that if I go out there and put an impressive win and, and finish Shobley, then I'll be fighting for that title next. Uh, but still, you know, don't you think that Bellator might put on, you know, a third fight between uh, Peter Quilly and uh, Patrick Freire, just in case, you know, the right scenario uh, comes up? No, if they do that, that's a joke. Uh, Peter Quilly had no business fighting for the title in the first place. He hasn't beaten anybody in the top five. And, and no, that's ridiculous, man. Uh, if, if that happens, then that's it. Uh, that better not happen. <laughs> I don't think it should, especially uh, the way that Patricky finished him in their last fight. He, you know, dusted him. Uh, it wasn't really a close fight at all. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think that should happen at all. Hell no. <laughs> It was just, you know, a sort of provocation from me. So, <laughs> um, listen, the card on which you're fighting is headlined by the middleweight championship clash between Gegard Muzazi and Johnny Eblen. I would like to hear your pick for this one. Man, I'm going with Musasi, dude. I don't know how you could bet against that guy. He's a, he's a beast. He's fought in the best guys in the world. And um, Musasi, that guy's a savage for sure. And would you like to share with us a prediction for your fight? Oh, man. I don't think it's going to go to decision, you know. Um, I don't really want to say my game plan too much, you know, but um, I'm just going to say that if, it, if it's a standing fight, if we, we're standing up, I really feel like I can knock him out. And if it goes to the ground, I definitely can, you know, finish this guy on the ground, choke him out or break his arm or whatever, so... Um, I just don't really see it going uh, decision, not at all. Have you already thought about your walkout song? Man, I, I honestly don't really care about my walkout song. I've had the same walkout song since I was an amateur, and, and I was going to switch it a couple of times, but my wife's like, no, just keep it there. Keep it uh, the same song. You, you, you'll always fought with that song or whatever. And I come out with, like, uh, AWOL Nation, uh, Blame on ADHD or whatever that is. and. Uh, I've always had like ADHD when I was growing up in school, like super hyper, getting kicked out of classes, could never settle down. And uh, I think martial arts definitely helped me with that a little bit, you know, and, and, and uh, but yeah, that's my song. I'll probably come out to that. Like, like I always do, but usually I'm so zoned out in my head that I really don't pay attention to the songs and, and, and everything. So um, just another thing I really don't, don't really care about too much. <laughs> that's fair enough. I imagine that you have mostly, uh, you know, more important things on your mind you know sure in that in those moments um in addition to your upcoming fight do you have any plans for the summer 
Oh, man, like, I want two fights this year, for sure. So after this fight, I definitely want to take, like, a week off, hang out with my family, hang out with my kids, and then get right back to it, man. I, I want at least two fights this year and then two or three next year. So uh, I just want to stay active, and I was really hoping to get a fight right after that Benson Henderson fight. It didn't happen, but um, I'm just happy and uh, thankful, you know, to Bellator that they got me a fight, and I'm – and fighting in a month, so I'm happy. But you know, I'm gonna take one week off, eat a bunch of cake, ice cream, pizza for a week, and then after that, <laughs> it's back to the grind. What's your favorite uh, pizza toppings? Oh man, <laughs> I, everything. I, I like all pizza pretty much. Um, but my biggest thing is like sweets. I love cake, ice cream, cookies, uh, pie. <laughs> anything like that <laughs> all my fights my my grandma has always made me like a, a homemade cake and uh, ever since I was an amateur you know uh she's made me a cake and I eat that after my fights and it's kind of like a ritual I used to she used to make me a cake after my weigh-ins and I used to eat a, a whole cake by myself right after weigh-ins and then and I'd go to the <laughs> fight and, you know and uh, I don't do that anymore you know I wait for I wait till after the fight now <laughs> but uh Yeah, man, definitely my grandma's cakes are like the best thing on earth and I, I can't wait for, for that for sure. I can guess that uh, grandma's cakes in general are always the best. Uh, listen, yeah. you, you mentioned uh, something that I was curious about. You, you know, you fought in uh, October. You told me that uh, you wanted to, to fight uh, another fight, you know, another time uh, last year. Um, it has been a while, you know, you know since October. Um, What happened, you know, in the meantime, and why didn't you get another clash? Well, after that fight in Arizona, Scott Coker did an interview saying, you know, Brent Primus is next. He's going to fight for the title. So in my head and all my coaches head, we were fighting for the title. So right after that fight, I flew to uh, California, started training with Coach Yama. We started training, getting ready for five rounds, started getting ready to fight uh, Patricky. And then we found out that he's fighting Sydney Outlaw and that kind of you know, put a stunt to things. And uh, so I was asking to fight anybody in the top five. I was really wanting Usman. Uh, that's what I was really wanting. And they said, he's not going to be ready until the end of summer. And then they offered me Shabli and um, he's with American top team, Florida. And I'm American top team, Port Portland. So there was a thing between them. Like they don't really want any of us fighting in unless it's for a world title. And, mm -hmm. and so They told Bellator, like, you know, we don't want Brent and Chobley fighting right now unless it's for the title. Um, and so they, both of our coaches, you know, said no to that fight. And then, and then they called me back. Bellator a couple months later said, we really want you guys to fight. It's either you fight Chobley or you take more time off. And so obviously I want to stay active. And we, Dan, Dan Lambert and Fabiano from both uh, American top teams talked and, said, screw it, let's just do it. And so here we are, we're fighting in the month. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Shabli is uh, ranked at, uh, it's the number eight ranked uh, lightweight. Uh, lightweight. Uh, were you disappointed when they offered uh, him? You know, you told me that you wanted that top five uh, guy. Yeah, I was really disappointed. I said, no, <laughs> I, not only is the American top team Florida, but he's number eight. I was wanting a two, three, four, five at the most at the, you know, and, and, uh, I was definitely disappointed, man, especially when you think you're going to fight for the world title and then they offer you a number eight guy. It like broke my heart. I was not happy. My coaches were not happy. Um, Hey, but it is what it is. You know, there's nothing I can do about it. I just gotta stay focused and train my butt off and go out there and, and beat this guy. And that title will come. Yeah, it, it seems that you have plenty to lose in this fight and, you know, perhaps a title shot, to, I mean, in case of victory, it should be granted to you, actually. I, I believe so. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Tell us to Scott Coker and all the guys, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I will try to, to let him know. Brent, I finished my questions. Before I let you go, do you have any last messages? No, I mean, just thank you to my coaches, uh, American Top Team, Uh, performance martial arts, Team Moyama, all my training partners. I mean, I wouldn't uh, be where I'm at w w without all of you guys. And obviously, Hayabusa for hooking me up with the best training gear possible. And Don Lewis Plumbing and, you know, all you guys. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. And 
stay tuned. Uh, less than one month out, and uh, it'll be fireworks for sure. Thank you for giving us a little bit of your time today. Best of luck with the upcoming fight, and hopefully I will hear again from you in the future. Thank you, man. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. You too.